I'm pissed off. Mm. I am pissed off. Something else that's popped up in the news that I think is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Uh, before I start, I want to make a quick side note for the people that have subscribed to my channel so far. Very appreciative of those subs. Um, I know it's been two months since my last upload, but don't worry. That doesn't mean it's been two months since I sat down and decided to do another video. I'm working on something which has got a bit more of a documentary feel about it now. The only downside is that it actually takes quite a long time to get those sorts of videos together. So I've decided that as well as doing those sorts of videos for you, I'm also going to have a bit more fun with this channel and uh, do videos like this where I'm talking a bit more freely off the top of my head. So here we go. So the reason why I'm pissed off is because of some absolute lunacy. And the more I've thought about this, at first I just thought it was a bit of ridiculousness that I laughed at and thought, <laughs> how fucking stupid. But the more I've thought about this, the more pissed off I have become. What I want to talk about is an article that I originally saw in the Times newspaper that says, Sainsbury's has bowed to pressure from domestic abuse campaigners by removing a triggering Roald Dahl inspired mug they said promoted violence against women. Really? Well, I must see what this phrase was printed on the side of this mug. So why don't we check it out? The mug had written on it the words, a brilliant idea hit her. What? A quote from the author's 1988 book Matilda about a precocious five-year-old seeking revenge on her head teacher. Ah, yes. Miss Trunchbull. She was a cunt. Activists had accused the supermarket of trivialising, <laughs> trivialising and promoting, trivialising and promoting, as in they're in favour of, physical abuse against women through the mug, which was on sale for £5.50. You know, if there's a crime, that's that's it, £5.50. Louis or Louis Abbotton, Labberton, head of Domestic Violence Assist, a domestic abuse charity, said he, he, oh, he was horrified to see the mugs on sale at store in Altrincham, 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 Cheshire. Sainsbury's has shown a lack of empathy for domestic violence victims displaying these a lack of empathy. They uh, Sorry, I don't think Sainsbury's show a lack of empathy. I don't actually think it even crossed their mind because, you know, their employees are sane and know that this has got absolutely nothing at all to do with violence towards women. That's what I think. It shows just how far from reality they Ah, oh. who's this helping? Who's this supposed to help? How on earth would this even be manageable? You'd never know. You'd never know what the next trigger is going to be because they've not healed. I mean, what if you're in a work situation? Anything, anything, but a work situation. You're a boss. You don't even have to be a male boss. You could be a woman. You could be a female boss or a manager of a team. And you turn around and say, Brilliant work, Deborah. That's a fantastic idea. You fit the nail right on the head there. And she turns around and goes, ah! fucking flips out, runs off down the corridor. What the fuck is it? Don't worry about it, boss. She was in a terrible marriage a few years ago. Evil bastard used to beat her senseless. Now she just hears certain words and just reacts. She can't play badminton. She can't play tennis, squash, anything, anything that involves hitting of any sort. Poor bitch can't even beat eggs now. Well, I'm sorry, this, uh, she needs, she's not, she's not well, she's not well, she needs help, she needs assistance, she needs counselling. What the world doesn't need to do is go around removing totally innocuous words and phrases because unpredictably, somewhere, at some time, it could trigger somebody's trauma. That's not what we want, is it? I mean, what if somebody got abused with boiling water and then you're in the kitchen one day and you flip the kettle on to make yourself a coffee? You get the same thing again. <laughs> whoa, 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 Do you know what I mean? Where's Susie gone? She's on the window ledge. She's on the window ledge. Do you turn the kettle on? Yeah, what? Prick. Do you not know anything? And I'm happy to joke about this sort of thing because I've had violence in my, I've had violence in my family. It's not a very good thing for an eight-year-old boy to see his parents 
having like a physical punch up at like two or three in the morning on his phone to his nan and granddad in tears, ringing up going, nan and granddad, come round, mum and dad are fighting again. And this is why I think the whole thing's fucking so ridiculous. I would really be quite interested in one working out or hearing from victims, genuine victims of domestic abuse who actually see mugs like this and say, do you know what, get rid of them, get rid of them. I don't actually think that that's how they want to live their life. It's a presumption, it is a presumption, but I would think that somebody who's experienced trauma would wish to be able to go through life, that they've moved on and got over their trauma to the point that they can actually operate in everyday life without feeling riddled with anxiety, stress and trauma and feel triggered because now suddenly words, a combination of words has come into their field of vision and now they can't, you know, can't shaking like a shitting dog. No victim of trauma would want to live that way. It's like agrophobics who can't, leave the house we just turn around and go do you know what we'll just get rid of the outdoors fuck it problem solved get rid of the outdoors emma webb a director of civitas a social policy think tank said how can the people on this thread not understand that a brilliant idea hit her means she had a brilliant idea exactly emma thank you very much it's a quote from matilda for christ's sake Stop trying to find a fence where there is none. I've heard psychiatrists talk about these sorts of things quite often. Uh, one person in particular, Jonathan Haidt, Haidt, Haidt DC, Jonathan Haidt. Um, he does a lot of work looking into um, the university campus mollycoddling that we've had over the past five or six years, resulting in safe spaces and trigger warnings and how in terms of dealing with trauma, shielding them away from things and giving them trigger warnings and all of that is the total opposite of what you should be doing to, able, to be able to strengthen someone and get them to recover from the psychological damage that that experience has caused. Where's the safe space gonna be when you're walking down the street one day, minding your own business, and then somebody shouts out, what do you think you look like in that shirt, you fat cunt, eh? What are you gonna do? You need to be prepared for that shit. You fucking, the world's a vicious place. What are you gonna do? Just <laughs> fucking crack like an egg? Demanding a safe space? No, fucking hell. Two world wars. This is where we are. Fuck me. However, this isn't actually the bit that's pissed me off. Like I said at the start of the video. No, 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 no. The thing that actually pissed me off about all of this was when I went to retrieve the article for the sake of talking about it for this video, I ended up with the independence article on this came up first. So let's read the Times headline again. Sainsbury's removes triggering Roald Dahl's Matilda mug from sale. Okay, you want to find out more. The Independent, Sainsbury's removing Roald Dahl hit her mug from sale after criticism from domestic abuse campaigners. Hmm, see what they've done there? They've managed to truncate the already short five word sentence down to two words, only concentrating on the, what now sounds like an action. It now sounds like a call to action and the independent know that they've done that, which is fucking horrific. I mean, it's the language that they've used. I mean, to be honest, a lot of the things that I'm quoting are not what the independent have written. They're quotes that I think some of them did appear in the Times article as well. And looking over this again in typical independent fashion, I don't actually feel too uncomfortable making that observation because if you look at uh, both articles, the Times and the independent, the only tweets and quotes the independent have included are the tweets and quotes of condemnation. The Times article has included all of that as well, but they've also included quotes from people like Emma Webb, the director of Civitas, a social policy think tank, who thinks the whole thing's bollocks. This mug is hugely problematic. We're trying to get them to stop selling it, apologize and make a donation to violence against women or a girl's charity. One person wrote on Twitter, the fucking Gestapo are out now. We want you to apologize and make a donation. Why, 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 why? For the crime of using words that can be used in multiple contexts. <laughs> you disgust me. Sounds like a bit of a hostage situation now, doesn't it? You're gonna apologize and you're gonna make a fucking donation, right? Ruth Mason, business development lead for change that lasts at Women's Aid, 
Not a psychiatrist then. Also criticised the mug and called on Sainsbury's to pull it from supermarket shelves. We were dismayed. She was dismayed to see the Sainsbury's design with the slogan. I think a lot of us are dismayed that something like this can actually be read and interpreted this way by people who, you know, haven't been sectioned. But above all of this, above all of this, the thing that really pissed me off, like I said at the start of the video, the thing that really got me going was on the Independence website. Um, as I was scrolling through, a video kept on automatically playing, automatically, I thought it was an advert on autoplay, I'm trying to get rid of it. And then as I scrolled back up to the top of the page, I noticed the same video was there again and they had headed the page with it, which, suddenly made me think, oh, The Independent are trying to relate this video to the article. So what's the video about? And it's actually a clip of Victoria Derbyshire talking from a BBC Panorama film that she's obviously made at some point. Independent of this, independent of any wife beating Matilda mug, right? And she, in the clip that is on the top of the website, she's briefly yet tearfully recounting a memory she had of her childhood home of her dad locking her mum in a particular room and um, hitting her. This is disgusting. Victoria Derbyshire's experience in a panorama video isn't disgusting. No, 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 no. That's completely legitimate. That is something that needs to be watched, understood and appreciated. However, Victoria Derbyshire's video, as I understand it, is about the troubles of being in a full COVID-19 lockdown while being locked up with an abusive parent or an abusive spouse. It has absolutely nothing to do with a so-called Sainsbury's Matilda inspired hit her mug. So the Independent have decided that they don't want to be mere reporters of news anymore. They want to be influencers. Yes, they've taken it upon themselves to attach an unrelated video heavily focused on domestic abuse and decided to attach it to an article about a rather trivial Sainsbury's Matilda inspired hit her mug <laughs> what are we gonna ban next that could trigger someone hey what are we gonna ban next like i don't know light bulbs a light bulb went off inside a light bulb moment a light bulb went off inside her head oh can't say that anymore says some jumped up equality activist why why is that well the thing is there's actually still quite a few places in the world where people don't have electricity so you know you know the third world they don't have light bulbs they don't have light switches on the wall, okay? So you trivialising light bulbs in that way just really shows that you're speaking from a white supremacist, westernised perspective and that's something that you really need to have a long, hard think about, isn't it? Hmm? You insensitive prick. So all of the people who like to sit around moaning endlessly about the fact that Donald Trump is America's president and the UK currently has a conservative government. This is why because of this shit. So that's gonna be it from me today. I've seen quite a lot in the news recently that I don't mind um, having a good old chat about. And considering the channel is called Charlie Talk, I might as well provide what I'm offering, right? So until then, gang, take care of yourself. Stay cool, stay sexy, stay safe. And I'll catch you next time. See you later.